Thank you very much, uh, Chair Bilirakis and also Ranking Member Schakowsky for holding this hearing today, and I appreciate the opportunity to wave on to the committee. Um, I also want to thank the commissioners for being here today, and I'm looking forward to discussing the work you've done and uh, continue to do on behalf of uh, our 340 million plus American constituents. Last Congress, we passed my bill, the Safe Sleeper Babies Act, which makes it unlawful for manufacturers to sell or distribute crib bumpers or inclined sleepers for infants. The law bans both crib bumpers, a category of products responsible for at least 107 infant deaths between 1990 and 2016 alone, and inclined infant sleepers like the recalled Fisher-Price Rock and Play, which was linked to over 100 infant deaths. Manufacturers of some infant products have known from the start that their products were risky and violated safe sleep advice. And I commend the CPSC and staff for working quickly to address these dangers through the enforcement of the Infant Sleep Products Act uh, rule. The passage of the Safe Sleep for Babies Act helped move the needle in creating a safe landscape for infant product safety, but th therefore it's always more, there's always more work to do. Chair Honsarak, Sarik, uh, what have been the successes and challenges the commission has encountered as it has worked to implement the Safe Sleep for Babies Act? Uh, thank you, Mr. Cardenas. As you said, Safe Sleep for Babies Act is a tremendously important piece of legislation that addressed you know, hazards associated with infant sleep, and both inclined sleepers as well as uh, crib bumpers. We've been active in the enforcement side of things and making sure that uh, those types of products are off the market. That is some of the challenges that we've been seeing. Uh, in a recent month, we were uh, doing investigations and took down uh, the, around 2,000 crib bumpers that were still being sold. So it's making sure that, that people are getting smart as well. They're calling them something slightly different, but look at the mm -hmm. pictures and you know exactly what they're for. So it's going on, especially on the online world, to make sure that we're able to uh, stop those things from, from happening. Thank you. And uh, Chair, uh, Chairman, what effect would the Republican majority's proposed 6% budget cut uh, have on your ability to protect families and consumers from harmful sleep products uh, for infants? I, mean, I think it would impact both what's our imports and ability to stop things in imports, but also we have an e-commerce team that last year reviewed about 3 million products online um, and did a takedown request of uh, nearly 60,000. All those uh, you know, jobs are at risk to be able to make sure that we have people there to do that, to be able to monitor, um, especially since uh, you know, the, the manufacturers often are overseas and selling directly to our consumers. So a 6% budget cut would actually make it harder for you to protect infants uh, like you've been trying to do so far? Absolutely. Okay, uh, thank you. I look forward to continuing to work with you to give families peace of mind in knowing that when their infant goes to sleep, the only thing parents must worry about is their baby waking up before uh, they do, uh, before they start their day. Um, also, Chairman, you mentioned in your testimony that outreach is a challenge not only with infant sleep products, but other products as well. Distributing good information on product safety to non-English speaking communities uh, can often be uniquely difficult as well. So Chairman, what hurdles have you encountered in efforts to increase public safety outreach, particularly outreach in languages other than English? Uh, one of the things the agency has been able to do with the ARPA funds that have been provided is to translate our recalls into Spanish. Um, Commissioner Boyle has been a huge proponent of that. Uh, and as that money goes away and our budget shrinks, you have that as um, being put at, put at risk. In addition, we've done a lot of um, community building to be able to find voices who are trusted, because oftentimes, um, unfortunately, um, we, we might need to be a trusted voice. We're not well known, and sometimes the government is not always um, uh, trusted, and so we want to build those relationships and find those voices out there. That also takes time. That takes resources to be able to build that awareness. Once again, cuts will just make it harder. Um, uh, last year, the American Academy of Pediatrics put out a letter to your commission expressing concern over many baby products that put children's lives in danger. Uh, can you update us on what the CPSC is doing as it relates to weighted infant sleep products? And are, are there other products that Congress should be looking at to make it safer for children to, to survive while sleeping? 
So we uh, don't do pre-market approval. So unfortunately, we often follow to see whether there are deaths and injuries associated with products. Um, the, the pediatrician has raised concerns about weighted products. So did CDC and um, so did NIH. We have, based off of their um, uh, information, given updates to consumers about um, uh, guidance on weighted sleep sacks. Um, and we are engaged in the voluntary standards side as well to be able to see if there's ways to improve the safety oh, of well. these products. But obviously, they're out there and they're still being used. Thank you so much. My time having expired, Mr. Chairman, I yield back. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. This concludes the questioning for today. I appreciate everyone. Thank you to the panel uh, for your uh, your answers and, of course, your testimony as well. Uh, I ask you